Chef Kiss. Chef Kiss. So many great Holo shots. Holo fans are eating good with the new Spice and Wolf. And my gosh, Passione is not holding back. But putting that aside, putting these spicy Holo shots aside, yes, episode two, I think, kind of encompasses, is a really early example of an encompassing of everything that I like about Spice and Wolf, the series. Again, I've watched the first season. I've read the light novel up to uh, volume four. And this is exactly what I love about this series. It highlights these multifacets that come together to make a really incredible series. The first thing, obviously, is the chemistry between Holo and Kraft Lawrence. And this episode has it in spades. It has that teasingness between the two characters, constantly Holo kind of teasing him, treating him as like a child because... The way that she, how old she is, she views Kraft Lawrence as a child. And so she's constantly teasing him about that. And yes, in some cases, kind of helping him out because she kind of sees him as very young and naive and all that kind of stuff. But additionally, getting into the trade itself, which yes, this series is about Kraft Lawrence traveling around with Holo and them doing different trades. And how the two of them see everything so differently, that's what makes them so incredible when they're together is that Kraft Lawrence himself sees everything by numbers, by time, all that kind of stuff. He's very kind of grounded in his trade. Whereas Holo is all about sensing and experience. She just knows based on her experience when somebody's lying or whatever. She's able to put that into play, those instincts into play when it comes to trade itself. And the two of them, when they come together, yeah, in a lot of cases, you'll see they both come to the same conclusion. It's that they come to that conclusion differently from different uh, angles. And that, that, again, that really kind of plays out here well. And yeah, we're already getting into the trade itself when it comes to this currency and the exchange rates. And they did a nice thing in this episode where they sort of kind of do a setup to the difference in currencies and then go right into a possible deal that they can do. So all that kind of stuff plays out well. They also kind of get into a little bit of the separation between the two of them, despite the fact that Holo and Kraft Lawrence work so well together. And we'll see more of that as we go along. They're in different worlds. I like how the, the episode itself even ends on that note of we're just two different people of different worlds. And they see things differently. Yes, Holo is a wolf. And yes, Lawrence is a human. And they're kind of at odds with each other. So they see things differently. Okay, here's this aspect of people being chased down by wolves. Well, we get chased down by humans too. So you see that separation that's kind of being created there. And yes, it kind of plays it into fun as well. And the idea that constantly Holo is trying to eat these potatoes constantly over the episode. And she just, she can't figure it out. She just shoves it in her mouth and tries to, you know, just wolf it straight down. Because that's what wolves do. Because they don't have cheeks. Um, I love that little kind of attention to detail they have there. But yeah, overall, like I said, just a very incredible episode to kind of encompass what makes Spice and Wolf so great. I've gotten that question now and then of people going, sell me on this show. Okay, here it is. <laughs> here it is. This is literally a sample of what you're getting and it was done so well they're doing a really good job adapting the series so far i mean i had my issues with that original scene in the first episode which some people have argued is makes sense to certain degrees i still don't think it's really necessary but it's fine it doesn't bother me and since it was in both of them both adaptations i assume that's kind of something that's necessary but they're pretty much going one chapter per episode and with that they can pretty much cover four volumes this one season so and again hopefully they keep going <laughs> But let's get into the episode proper, opening it up with them having this little scene where Hollow is making a point about she's getting fleas and he's talking about how, yeah, they're, they're really good furs. And she's like, oh, so you're talking about my tail. Yes, my tail is really great. <laughs> and yes, my ears are really great. You get that like that pridefulness of Hollow the wise wolf, which is emphasizing the idea that she takes great pride in herself because she has these attributes to herself. But additionally, hinting on the fact that she can tell when somebody's lying. She has great ears. She can sense dangers. She can sense disasters. Oh yeah, and also can smell the rain coming. So it kind of plays into her abilities as being this very wise and old wolf. But that's where we go and seek refuge in the church itself, where we get, again, that kind of chemistry between the two characters. They're kind of getting dried up. Again, Hollow just doesn't... <laughs> She doesn't view herself as needing to be covered up. Again, she's a wolf. Wolves don't wear clothes. So she's very open about herself, just kind of dancing around and drying herself off and constantly standing and posing in front of him. And he just cannot handle it. He's constantly flustered having this girl in front of him, just not, not being modest in any way, shape, or form. It was kind of funny to kind of get that little brief moment where she's teasing him for his stinky nature. <laughs> Despite the fact that you're wet, you still smell bad. <laughs> You should take care of yourself. Uh, you're, you're, you look good, though, because you have this beard. But I think you should grow it out more like this. And, yeah, 
it kind of makes it seem like she's talking about whiskers. But yeah, she's basically saying like an entire face like a wolf. Like it says in the light novel, yeah, grow it out like a wolf and have an entire face full of hair. But yeah, that's where we get the little scene with him talking to a man that owns a winery. And again, this is where they're kind of opening it up to starting to talk about, of course, with a lot of different regions, a lot of different villages, a lot of different locations, they're obviously going to have a difference in currency. And I think right here, they're pretty much emphasizing how Kraft Lawrence kind of employs this thing that they've set up as merchants. Merchants, when they go to different locations, they will trade goods for goods rather than selling the goods and getting the currency of the location. And I think that what that kind of bypasses is yes, the difference in exchange rates, the, the difference in the worth of the value of the coin itself. Like as mentioned later on by Zerin, some of these silver coins possibly, <laughs> possibly are going to be uh, changed and in other regions, they're going to be worth more. So yes, depending on where you're traveling, the worth of the dollar or the worth of the silver is gonna be different for each region. It could also just be based on the economy there, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stipulations and reasons and why this stuff can be actually worth differently. And yes, the guy's like asking, should I learn this? And Lawrence is like, no, don't, you don't have to worry about that. Just make sure that the person that you're working with doesn't rip you off when it comes to the actual price, which is obviously important. But again, I like how that's kind of put there because again, when they go to talk to Zerin, what Zerin is going to offer to them is this opportunity that they're going to be, there's this rumor, there's going to be this changing of how much silver is in the coin itself. And that can apply to different regions, it being worth more. So it's a nice little setup there. But I do like the scene with Zerin himself. <laughs> By the way, as we can all tell, the guy's got squinty eyes. It, we all know that when you have squinty-eyed characters in anime, you never trust squinty-eyed characters. They're always the bad guy. This is the this is the villain trope. But no, the guy, the guy is super creepy. <laughs> He's a young merchant, so we'll we'll like let it slide, but the dude's super creepy. Uh, that that grin that he has after he says things is like, don't trust that guy. <laughs> don't trust that guy. <laughs> But no, like, I think what's worse is the fact that I, even in the light novel, it kind of mentions it. Like, he immediately takes note of Holo. And he, yes, Lawrence this entire time is in pointing out to everybody that this is my wife. And she keeps herself covered up because she has a burn mark on her face. So she doesn't want to show it to anybody. And immediately the guy goes over and goes, oh, this is your wife? She must be precious. That's why she have her covered up. And he goes over to go actually take it off. And Lawrence in his head thinking, man, I just told you that it's my wife. And what are you doing? <laughs> What is this guy's problem? But yeah, Holo goes into this little like long speech about how it's like this thing that I don't want to reveal to you because then it would just ruin everything for you. Keep that mystery. Don't don't ruin it for yourself. I would hate to deprive you of that mystery. Um, but that was that was a really funny little scene there. But yeah, this, the, the following scene, like I said before, is really kind of showing how Hello and Kraft sort of see things differently. And they talk a little, a little bit about it later on, just before the whole conversation about the wolves and eating people and all that kind of stuff. But it's kind of implying this idea that Lawrence over here, yes, when he, he, he immediately asks Hello, was he lying? And she's like, yeah, he was lying. The problem is that Hollow doesn't know what he was lying about. Because yes, as she kind of points out, and he agrees that it's something that he had to learn after a long time of doing this, that yes, it's not so much about what the lie is itself, it's about the reason for the lie. That's the important thing here. So she's saying that, yes, this Zarin guy is lying, but what could he be lying about? Is he lying about the fact that there are going to be upgrading the coin itself to have more silver? Is he lying about the fact that it could sell for better elsewhere? Could he be lying for the reason why he would want them to get involved with him? There's a lot of different things, or lying about him actually making a profit. There's, there's so many things in there, but what's most important is amongst this lie, what is the reason for the lie? Is it, like he kind of points it, yeah. It could be, even if I do fall along with this, in the end, if it does, doesn't work out, somebody's got to be making a profit. That's the thing. Why would this guy tell me that I can bring these coins and sell them elsewhere? And if I make it, because basically what Zeren told him is I will go out I will get, I will, I will gather these coins. Then I'm going to go to this other location and I'm going to sell those coins. And if I make a profit, I'll give Zeren some of it. So why would he lie about it? Because if he does, if it doesn't work out, Zeren's not going to get anything. So what would be the point in Zeren even lying if that was the case? There's got to be something else going on. That's the whole point of this whole thing. And I like how Lawrence himself even knows that. Like, yeah, my intention here, like she asked him what he would do. He's like, yeah, I would probably follow along with it. I would act like... I thought it was true because I, he wouldn't believe him. 
I wouldn't believe that Zarin's telling me the truth, but I'll follow along with it, acting like I believe it's true. And then when, at the end of it, if I don't make any profit, I'll look into exactly what the purpose of it, who was doing this and what their whole point was in doing this. And in the end of the day, it comes down to the same conclusion. Like I said, they both see the situation differently. Hollow is based on instinct, hearing him, knowing that he's lying. Lawrence is doing it safely in the idea of assuming that somebody's doing this for a profit, that there's something to gain here, that somebody's doing it, and I got to figure out what that is so I can get in on it. It's not so much that Lawrence is letting himself get fooled. He's looking into seeing, investigating what actually is making this tick. So again, that's what makes Spice and Wolf so great. And I love that they're already kind of showing that so well so early in the series so you get a taste of it. Now, again, I admitted in my first impressions for my first episode, and I've said this before in my other videos and content, I didn't like the first time I watched this show when it started getting into this currency stuff. And it was really when he started investigating the currency and how it's changing that I'm like, ugh, this is just too much for me. But after the second time of watching it, I was like, for some reason it's clicking now. For some reason I'm just loving this. And I think it's because I didn't see that how these characters all see the same thing differently. But yeah, I like how she kind of comes up to him and pretty much says, you young boy, uh, I don't hold it against you because you're still young. To, in my eyes, you're still young. Again, this is where, like, many times she keeps poking at him. You're just a child, basically. And, and I, like how he said, what do you think of that kid? What, do you think he was lying? She just immediately goes, oh, Zeren, I, I'm sorry. I seen the both of you as young. So it, it doesn't, the, you both look like kids to me. So you have, you have to be more specific. Uh, but yeah, it was, it's, it's really great stuff. But yeah, additionally, in the scene, we get that little sense there of um, how, yes, Holo is, yeah, by the way, a wolf. So it kind of gets in that whole thing where she she loves that humans bake these potatoes rather than eating them raw. But at the same time, she's having difficulty because she has to keep she's wolfing it down like a wolf would. You just wolf it down. They didn't. She's not used to having cheeks where you have to kind of chew on it for a little bit. Wolves, they don't have that. They're, they're like this. And so it just kind of falls out the side of the cheeks. Um, so I like that like little attention to detail that they have there to kind of show how she's struggling with being a wolf or being a human. But yeah, additionally, they did get into the, the wheat itself, which they kind of equate it to hollow herself. If the wheat is fine, she'll be fine. If the wheat gets crushed or destroyed, she might disappear. So what they do instead is they decide to pretty much take the wheat and take off the ends of it, stick it inside of a bag so she can keep it with her. So it's kind of like her keeping that the soul of the wheat itself with her. Because, yes, that was what she was trapped into, and it's the whole symbolism's there. Thresh it, sorry. Thresh it, that's the term. The next scene's kind of showing that tragic aspect of the world itself kind of moving on and moving forward and changing so much around her that she never really noticed. Yes, technically, Holo, when she came down from the north, again, she ran into this person at this village. They weren't fearful of her. They requested that she would look over the harvest of the village itself, and she's been there for a long time. Now, noting here that when she was in that village, Things didn't change as fast in there, that village, than the outside world itself. Yes, technically the world moved into the church and everybody started believing in the church itself. But that village, as they kind of note, is still doing the festival and everything. Still doing pagan uh, rituals and stuff like that, as they would claim. So she technically wouldn't have noticed the changes of the world itself as much as she was secluded in that village. So it's not until she leaves the village. She knew that the church existed. It wasn't until she leaves the village that she starts to notice, man... Yeah, the world itself just kind of changed so much. And he's asking her, well, you've changed too, right? No, I haven't really. Okay, well, hopefully, when we get you back up north, hopefully your land up there hasn't changed either. So it's already starting to show how Lawrence does want to get her back to her homeland. He does sort of have feelings for that side of what she's going through. But yeah, the final scene is obviously was a hard one to go through. But yeah, that's where, you know, they have them kind of taking jabs at each other. And then eventually Hollow just kind of slips out something that was a bit too much. <laughs> and talking about wit and how you get, you know, older and you get more smarter and how, yes, him jabbing at her that as she grows older, maybe her, her wits are decaying. She decides to bring up, do you know why wolves eat humans? It's because we want to consume their heads so that we gain power. And that was not a nice subject to get into for Lawrence, as we kind of see. He's had experience being chased down by wolves. He says eight total times, it seems, that yes, he's been chased down by wolves and even has witnessed other people being consumed by wolves. And it yes, it obviously is something that he doesn't find funny. And so the jabbing going back and forth, Hollow kind of takes a little bit too far and it just kind of ruins the entire conversation and yes, upsets Lawrence. But again, this is where I kind of find it interesting because as he's upset, 
And Hollow's like, crap, yeah, she realizes very quickly that she kind of stepped on a nerve and she apologizes for it. She ends up kind of turning it back on him. But at the end, it seems like she's trying to turn it back on him comedically. Like, because at the very end, she's like, oh, now we're even. Ha ha ha. She's trying to make light of it in the end, but it technically is true. She is speaking truth to him at the same time, saying, we feel the same way. You're upset at me for bringing that up because, yes, you've gone through some terrible experience with wolves. But just so you know, from the wolves' perspective, it's the same for us. Unlike dogs who always live beside humans, we wolves have never been able to do that. We've, we've always been secluded to the forest. So when the humans come into the forest, they're always hunting us down. That's what we see as humans. They're, we're, we're fearful of humans because that's all humans do with us is hunt us down. So every time they enter the forest, we immediately think, how can we best them? That's all they're thinking. How can we take them down? And yes, he even realized at some point, you've been hunted down before then. And she doesn't want to talk about it. And yes, then that's when it turns into a joke. But again, it shows that difference. We're different worlds here. We live in completely different worlds. No matter how much they get along with each other, how much they have fun and talk and converse. And yes, and work out these deals and whatnot. They have this great chemistry between the two of them. In the end, they've lived different lives and they are in different worlds themselves. They see the world differently. They perceive it differently. And yes, they have experiences that are very much so at odds with each other. So great. I love it. Really great uh, presentation of it itself. I, I really did love this episode and how they kind of lay that all out. But man, great stuff. Great stuff. <laughs> Looking forward to more. This, this episode definitely just keeps ramping up my hype for this series and I'm loving it so much. But that's my thoughts on episode two. Hope you guys enjoyed my impressions. If you did, make sure that like button down below, comment, let me know what's the episode. And if, additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button to get my content. I do news reviews, first impressions, top list if it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, I'll be doing first impressions of all the shows of the season. So if you want to know a basic idea of the show itself, this is the place to be. Additionally, if you like this content and you want to support the channel more, I have Patreon link, tips, links, and thanks to membership button below. Greatly appreciate it, it does. Y'all take care.